Woohoo! This is gonna be a good episode. Hey everyone, Zoltan Famous here, and welcome back to W to B, or worst to best in, uh, in other words. Today is gonna be a very long episode, so long as I do very long explanations for each album, but today is the Flower Kings, in my, a band that has been in my top 10 favorite bands for a long time now, love this band, one of, uh, one of my all time, in my top 10 favorites, like I just said, and of course, every band has one album that I cannot get into very much, and this band is no, is no stranger to that, even my favorite band of all time has an album that I just cannot get into. Some songs are pretty good on that one album, but I just cannot get into it. This band is no exception. So let's dive right in. The Flower Kings um, originated in 1994. They released the their first album called Back in the World of Adventures, which was a very um, which was a great album. And of course, we have to do a review on every single one. So that I don't have to do a review on every single one of these albums in depth. I might do them anyway. Might do a, an in-depth review of every album that I cover on all of these episodes. But next one will be another band that I've loved for a long time. I'm not going to reveal it just yet. Because I have to finalize it and I have to create the thumbnail and see if it looks good and all that. So the Flower Kings. Let's dive right into this baby with their weakest of all their albums. The Rainmaker released in 2001. Now I know Notes Review did a um, uh, uh, did a, a video exactly like this. I'm taking his format. I know that. And if Notes Review, if you're watching this, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Um, uh, yeah, I completely agree with his placing of this album. It is one, it is the most boring of all the Flower Kings albums. However, there are two really good songs on this album, and they shine really, really well on this album, which is City of Angels, which is a very quintessential sounding Flower Kings song, and Blessing of a Smile, which I think was written by Thomas Bodine. And it, it overall, it wasn't a terrible, terrible album. It was just too rocking, too commercial friendly. It didn't, it didn't feature enough of the, um, it didn't have enough prog elements in it to me. It was more of a blues rock album than it was a progressive rock album. It had some really good progressive rock moments, but other than that, it was just a fallback. And it was their weakest album to this date. I'm hoping that their new album called um, Wishing for Miracles is a good album, but we're going to leave that in the future because it is coming in November of this year, and I'm going to do a full in-depth review of the album. <laughs> okay, next album. Now, this one's going to be a bit of a... <sighs> this one's going to sink me, but whatever. Number 11. The Sum of No Evil, released in 2007. Yes, I know, in notes reviews, if you are watching this, this was at the very top. And I agree with some of the standpoints that you had, which was the structure. The structure was very well, it was a very well put together album, but none of the songs grabbed me enough to put it anywhere near the top five. In fact, the first song was the best song on the album. Uh, Thomas Bodine's little um, instrumental uh, near the end was very weird, and t and it just went in way too many directions. That it, it 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 was it was it just didn't sound like the Flower Kings at all at that point, and it was just it and some of the songs on that album just. It sounded like they were trying to copy old Flower Kings, but they failed at it, and none of the songs were interesting enough. They never, it never uh, pulled me in. It never grabbed me. Nothing ever made me say, "Hey, I want to listen to this one again." 
just the first track was really good and that's pretty much the decline after that the second track was pretty okay too other than that the entire album just sank further and further over time in many listens but that was about it okay number 10 Adam and Eve released in 2004 this one is also very heavily rated on on uh, notes reviews video sorry again um, I do have to say that this one was a huge upgrade from the <laughs> from their next album which would have been uh, the sum of no evil this one had some quintessential flower King sounding songs but it also it suffered from the same thing that the rainmaker had which was uh, too much blues rocky sounds and some of the songs were just plain boring and and they all started to sound the same around that same time but the first song and a few of the other songs that I just I can't remember the names of the songs yet but I'll um, I'll figure that out later I'll do a full in-depth review of all these albums in a later date but it, it's at number 10 just because of the fact that it, there were some very boring songs and there were some really good songs but it all in all it was just had way too many boring songs and too little good songs on this album but next number nine desolation rose released in 2013 now this one is a bit of a controversial opinion and i think this is the exact same placement as the one on note reviews i can't remember uh don't quote me on that and i know i'm bringing him up a lot i just want to make sure that this is um build off of what he did but in my own perspective sort of thing right um there was a lot of really good moments on this album it was a little bit polished it seemed a little bit too polished and again kind of like what he said it seemed a little bit too well put together it was a really good album and there were really really good songs on that album but it, it, it uh, and there were some really boring songs and it just sunk after that <laughs> all right number eight banks of Eden released in 2012 now this one is whew. oddly enough it it takes just it's it's a little bit better than the the coming the, than the the uh, than their last album, which was Desolation Rose, and for one reason, the 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 first half of the album has some amazing tracks on it, very much like Desolation Rose, but it doesn't slip into a boring state as quick. And uh, the well, I mean, there, this one only has five tracks, but I downloaded the deluxe edition, so there's nine tracks on the deluxe edition. So, and Desolation Rose is a double. CD, which again has some really good stuff on the second CD as well, but you know, they're both very similar sounding albums and they both try to bring back some of that quintessential stuff, but it doesn't work out very well. It, it ends up sounding very much like um, newer stuff that they've been doing, but better constructed. Okay, number seven. Paradox Hotel released in 2006. I made I made a mistake. Ah, it was Paradox Hotel and then the Summer of No Evil. Ah, well, the order of the albums doesn't really matter. It's this list that is the that is the important thing about this video that you should be paying attention to. Sorry. Anyways, um it is a fantastic concept piece the first side of the album is unbelievably good with thomas bodine doing some singing and vocals of course wow he's good he's got some really good moments where he shines really really well and his keyboard playing on this album is splendid splendid who why would i use that word anyways it blends really well with this album and it shows a lot 
they were trying to mix that new sound that they were uh, working with and with Adam and Eve, but mixing it with previous sounds, uh, 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 you know, dynamics um, and quintessential Flower King sound in um, stuff that they put onto this album. So it's very highly rated. In my opinion, it's a great album. Go listen to it. And whoa, go ahead. First side of the album is much better though. Second side of the album is pretty good, but has some pretty boring moments in there too, but oh well. Anyways, number six. Retropolis released in 1996. Pretty damn good second album to be releasing, huh? Really solid release. It, it was a really good album. Good all the way through. It w and here's the problem though. It was a little bit more commercial and a little bit less complicated of an album than their than their debut album. And it was a little bit shorter, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was a couple of minutes shorter. But it was a pretty damn good album. It was dynamic. It had some really good moments. Oh, f f such as the the uh, title track. <whistles> Great song. Everything on that album really flows and is pieced together really well. The The structure of it is um, a little bit poorly constructed, but other than that, everything sounds really well well put together, and it's a really good album altogether. So, I've said all together way too many times in this video, but I don't really care. Okay, in the top five. Here we go. Unfold the Future, released in 2002. Wow. Damn. This is probably around the same place, too. Damn. Okay. Um, I love the opening track, um, The Truth Will Set You Free. Half an hour long. And you would think that after the first ten minutes that you would get bored. No. It, 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 it's... It's really, really well put together, that one song. It's six songs in one, a lot of repetitive moments, but they're, those repetitive moments are put together in such a re, in, in perfect places that I can't fault it for that. Because it, it, it's like you start at the beginning, then you go back to that same place, which does a huge circle to end the song, and it's really well pieced together. Um, it slowly but surely degrades and gets a little bit boring by the end, but it's still such a great album. Every single disc has so many great songs. I love it. It's such a great album. I love everything everything on this album. It's great. I think it definitely deserves to be in the top five just because of that. And the album cover is so cool. Definitely in their top three best album, album cover looks by far. <laughs> Number four. Back in the World of Adventures, their debut album released in 1995. <whistles> Again, perfect debut album. It was there. It was the perfect album to be released from the band in terms of a debut album because, as far as I remember, um, as far as I know, um, Retropolis was actually written. Had some uh, material written first, but it, it turned out that they were going to release Back in the World of Adventures first, and then Retropolis, which I think was a better idea, because hey, Back in the World of Adventures is a strong way to really to um get your name out there, and it was perfect. The title track, oh my God, the title the the title track essentially. World of Adventures. It's such a great song. Again, very celebratory. Not complicated. Some really good odd times. Seven Against Four is a huge trend among that band. Almost, I think half of their songs ever recorded were in Seven Against Four and nothing else. But it's a really good album. I love this album. Everything on this album is fantastic. It flows really well. It's well pieced together. The structure of the album is fantastic. And that album cover is really cool, too. Metropolis is really cool, too, when it comes to their album covers, but it's not as good as uh, um, Back in the World of Adventures. Okay, 
Number three. Space Revolver, released in 2000. Oh, man. There is only one song on this album that I can say that I don't particularly enjoy as much as the rest of the album, which is Slave to Money. Not my favorite track by the Flower Kings at all. It's a good track still, but it's not my favorite. Everything else on that album flows so well. It's such a great album. I love it so much. And it's a shorter album, too. I think it's only 72 minutes. Whereas almost half, I think over half of their discography is um, double albums. So for a single album to be in the top three, whew, must be pretty special. Of course, my favorite songs on the album are Chicken Farmer Song, I Am the Sun, Full Sweet, um, A King's Prayer, and oh, everything else except for A Slave to Money. All of those songs are fantastic. Love everything on this album. Really well put together. The next two are the only reasons why it's put it's put lower. If these two albums wouldn't if didn't happen, it wouldn't have been so high up. So number two, Flower Power, released in 1999. Wow, before the turn of the cent before the turn of the century, huh? Wow. Really good uh, album to put out before the uh, the end of the 1900s. Um, probably this it, it it's in the top ten uh, best releases of that year. It's I mean in the of that decade. Oh man, it it comes after it, it it right it 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 comes right after. Um, you know things like um cowboy poems free. And, um, the, uh, can't remember what it's called, but Echolin also should be a thing that I do later on. But this one came in second. It's a re the entire first disc is so perfect. There's not one song on that first disc that I would say, yeah, okay, I can live without it. Everything is pieced so well together. The Garden of G Dreams Suite is so unbelievably good. Oh. And there are, um, except for the first two tracks on the second disc, everything on that on the second disc is really good. Oh, man, it's such a well put together album. Love everything on this album, except for those two tracks. I think it was called uh, Deaf, Numb, and Blind and Stupid Girl. Just can't get into those ones. They're not my favorites. They do ramble a little bit, but everything else is just so good. Oh, man. Anyways, if you don't already know what number one is, then you don't know the discography, but here it is. Number one. Stardust We Are, released in 1997. There's not one song on this album that I hate. Every single song on this album is perfect. It is a great album. It is the... It is what Flower Kings... It is the... It, how do I explain it? It is the signature album by the Flower Kings, and it is a fan favorite for a reason. Stardust We Are, the title track, the 24-25 minute concept... Peace is one is probably their one of their most signature sounding songs in all of the Flower King's history. And the first disc with oh, a church to your heart. In the eyes of the world. And oh man, Thomas Bodine's um A Room with a View. What a beautiful uh, everything on this album is amazing. And Roy Stolt shines a lot on this album, too. Um, an Ordinary Man Playing... Uh, play, an Ordinary Rain Man Playing Guitar. I think that's what it's called. I love Tom... I love Thomas Bodine's playing, and I love Roy Stolt's playing. They both get a chance to shine on this album. And I, I, Hasse Freuberg's uh, voice is really good, too, on this album. He sounds fantastic when he's doing harmonies and colorization. 
And here's where I'm gonna get f uh, flack for it, but I really prefer Roy Stoltz's voice over H uh, over Huss's uh, voice. But Stardust We Are is by far my favorite album, and it will never change. If I had to do the Desert Island Challenge, and I only had to bring five albums with me, this would be in the top five albums that I bring bring with me. That and Pat Metheny, Genesis, and some Lyle Mays with me. <laughs> Prog rockers are looking at me like, this kid knows who Genesis and Pat Metheny and Lyle Mays are? Who is this kid? Oh, man. Flower Kings. Love this band. They will stick with me forever. And Stardust We Are is going to be my favorite album by far. I might get bashed for loving for the order of this, but I really don't care. I think that those three albums are what the Flower Kings should sound like. Or they should build off that, that sound that they've been perfecting for years. And base it off Stardust, We Are, Flower Power, Space Revolver, Back in the World of Adventures, and Unfold the Future. Those ones are pinnacle moments in the Flower Kings. I didn't want to do Roin Stoltz, the Flower King album, because I don't think it counts. It's just a Roin Stoltz solo album, so I'm not going to count it. But I will listen to it and give you guys my full review on that album if you guys want it. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you agreed with this list and liked the video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.